All right. So I am going to uh, share my little PowerPoint here. So the objective of this session um, is to talk a little bit about the, the, the process of synthesis, um, which is really central to um, writing a literature review and really should be central to um, you know, all of your research in general. So I'm going to talk a little bit about summary, um, sort of define that um, synthesis, try to define that um, kind of in opposition to summary, and talk a little bit about how to structure um, your research. Um, I would like each of you, um, I, I think I'm on a better connection right now <laughs> than I was a couple days ago, um, but just in case, I would like each of you to write down my email address. So Kevin at calamuswriting.com. Um, if something goes wrong, I want you to email me and I will send you back the recording. Um, so yeah, so please make sure that you've got that email address written down. Give you a minute. It, it's kind of a weird email address, I, I realize. All right. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about, uh, I, I want to define these terms, first of all. So I want to start by talking about what is summary. Um, it seems very simple, um, but it's an important component to putting together uh, your research. So first of all, what, what is summary not? Summary is certainly not copying. Um, so a summary should not be the abstract of, um, of an article. Um, it should not be um, simply taking out um, the you know, particular um, aspects of, uh, of an article and just copying them. That you all know that is plagiarism um, and, and we don't wanna do that. Um, it, but it's also not just repeating uh, the, the various points that are made in an article. Um, su summary is trying to encapsulate everything that is within um, one article. Um, summary is also not talking about the methodology. So when there, there will be some cases in which you want to talk about the methodology that was used in a particular article, um, but in general, unless that, that methodological detail is important um, to whatever it is that you're doing, um, you, you're, you're critiquing it or you're using it as a model or, or whatever. Typically, when, when we're summarizing, we don't go into um, all of that extra detail. There will be cases where you, where you want to do that, but those will be um, you know, with the articles that um, uh, are particularly pertinent to your methodology. And typically, um, summary is not critiquing an article. So when, 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 you're, when you're summarizing, you're not necessarily just trying to say, um, here are the good points and here are the bad points of the way that, that this author um, approached the research. What summary is, is identifying the, the, the main ideas of the article and pulling out the important things. So, um, you know, I, I need to know how this article relates to you, how it relates to your project, how it relates to your paper. Um, and it's, it's about giving clarity um, to your audience. So I, I wanna make sure that I, I understand how th this particular source is relevant to your project, um, putting it in context. So um, again, that, that relates to your, your particular project, but also the broader um, maybe social problem that you're trying to address, um, the, the broader, um, uh, well, the, the problem of practice, right? So, so I want you to be focused on um, putting that source in 
uh, within a within a context. And summary is also a way of making sure that you understand um, the that that particular source. Um, you should be processing it in in your own mind in order to uh, make it make sense to to um, to uh, uh, to your reader. So summary is when when you're when we're looking at at research. Summary is the beginning. That's the first step to make sure that you fully understand what that source is saying. But the goal of a literature review um, or really any research is not summary, it is synthesis. Um, so I, I want to just, I want to pause here and I want to ask you um, what, in your mind, what, what does the word synthesis mean? Feel, feel free to just chime in. Connecting ideas. Okay, yeah, I like that. Connecting ideas. So, I so disparate ideas. Um, uh, you know, uh, one author says one thing, and another author says another thing, and how do we connect those those things? What else? Uh, connecting ideas, and then trying to come up with maybe a new kind of an idea out of two maybe different ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great way of putting it. That um, when we when we put um, two concepts together, we might come up with a third concept. Yeah, definitely. I like that. What else? Any other ideas? I was. I think this is related. Uh, I was going to say um, finding uh, some specific meaning or new meaning out of the okay ideas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. Um, that. Uh, we're we're trying to pull pull some understanding out of a, a collection of sources, um, and and no individual source is giving us that meaning, but if we put them all together, we might come up with with some meaning. Okay, good. All right. So then the question is why. So you 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 have to read a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and you need to understand it. Mm -hmm. Why is the synthesis part important? Yeah, because it shows all the different kind of angles and aspects and, and, and arguments about a particular topic. And then it shows the reader that, it, I think it, brought, it can help to broaden the reader's understanding of the subject like by giving it many parts. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, yep, I agree with that. Definitely. What, what else? Maybe it's there to prove your, the idea of your synthesis. Um, uh, can you exp expand on that a little bit? Uh, since, um, uh, maybe we, uh, we already have a synthesis part where we want to develop the ideas, right? Uh, so, but at the end of the day, we have a, a, a one specific problem that we want to answer, and maybe that why yeah. kind of connects those ideas. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. Um, uh, demonstrating your own uh, knowledge of the of the problem that you're trying to address um, by by pulling in multiple um, different. Uh, ideas yeah i think that makes sense anything else yeah, kevin i wanted to add that sometimes it allows you to compare and contrast and blend in ideas that are counter to each other so you're able to use like a thesis and uh antithesis and a kind of blend them in and ultimately the final product would give you like that broader perspective including refutations and, and, and whatnot yeah definitely so you're 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 pulling in multiple ideas to to try to you know, come up with some new idea, but some of the some of the ideas that you're pulling in are going to be contradictory, and and part of synthesis is making sense of um, the the opposing viewpoints or the opposing results um, from uh, from different studies. Yeah, I think that's good. So again, I I don't know why I designed this to be so negative, but <laughs> what is synthesis not? Um, it is not summarizing an article um, in in a paragraph, right? So when when I work with students, 
um, particularly on, on lit reviews, um, like a, a red flag to me is that is when I see like there's one paragraph that's about, you know, Johnson 2018. And then I'm just, here's this thing. And then the next paragraph is Smith 2019. And then we've just, I have that paragraph about that, that one, that one author. Um, synthesis is not just repeating what other people said separately. Um, it's also not, again, it's not about the method. So often I will see um, liter literature reviews where I get this whole list of the methodological process of, of one article. I, again, like I said before, unless that methodology is important to what you're doing, I don't need to know how many surveys they sent out. I don't need to know, you know, whatever. I, I just need to know what was the, what was the point um, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the study that you're, that you're referring to. And, and how does that study relate to your study? Um, synthesis is also not um, just your opinion. You know, that this was a good article or, or a bad article. In, unless there's some like very clear, again, methodological issue, um, I don't need to know uh, that if you agree or disagree with the conclusions. Um, and again, um, it, well, I, it, it should go without saying, but um, no ad hominem um, criticism of, of an author. Um, that, but I, I put that in there because I do see it uh, from time to time um, when I'm reading a uh, student's work. So, it, so it's not, uh, you are not criticizing the author. You're trying to put the author into um, into some context that that will make some sense um, uh, in relation to your study. So what synthesis is is taking. I mean, we've already sort of discussed this. Taking taking multiple ideas and putting them together. So um, what what can I learn? So if I have three articles, what what do I know? by reading all three articles that I didn't know by reading each individual one, right? So the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The, um, when I put these articles into conversation with each other, what new thing do I learn? And so, so when you're collecting uh, literature and when you're reading literature, it's important to think about how each uh, individual article relates to all the other articles. So when we put them together, what are we actually learning? And, and what, what connections um, can we draw? Um, and, and hopefully, of course, um, we'll, we'll get multiple perspectives on a problem. So hopefully you're, you're able to find multiple sources that are kind of approaching the same issue um, from different directions. Um, when I was writing my dissertation, uh, my mother, I, I always refer to my mother, um, who has a doctorate as well, um, and, and was sort of my, my coach uh, when I was going through the process. She always referred to a literature review as a funnel. So at the top of the funnel, we have all the information that's out there, like everything that anyone's ever written about whatever it is that you're, that you're uh, studying. But as we get down um, to, the, you know, to the, the, the small part of the funnel, hopefully we're starting to um, really zoom in on uh, whatever the, the issue is that, um, that you want to address. So the, the goal of a literature review ultimately is to find what's missing. So we know all of this stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we know. What do we not know? And yet you have to start with the big picture, 
but sort of slowly get down to the 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 particular thing that you are interested in. So that might be um, uh, it, it hasn't been studied with um, you know a particular population. It might be um, there, there's some aspect of the problem that um, that hasn't been examined, and that's what you are going to examine. So. When, when you're doing that, when, when you're collecting literature and when you're trying to kind of think through it, um, I really recommend kind of considering that, that metaphor of the funnel uh, because it really, that, that's, that's what we're trying to get to. I, we don't need to know everything. Um, everything is already out there. Your, your particular literature review needs to be um, getting to a point where I know exactly what it is that you are going to do about a, a problem. All right, so um, I don't know why I have my address there too. I wanna to take a minute, I'm going to give you a little project, um, but I wanna take a minute for any uh, questions, concerns, you're, you're, you're gonna get a little assignment here in a minute. But any, any, any questions about any of the, the, the stuff that I just kind of spewed at you? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Hi. Nice to Hi. see you again. Um, yep. Kevin, Kevin was my writing coach. <laughs> um, so I've heard his mother's advice before, and she's actually <laughs> in my ear now being like, get it done. And I'm like, okay, Kevin's mom, I will. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I actually have a question from one of my cohort members. Um, about synthesizing the research. So what she's running into, and I might run into this later, which is another reason I'm asking, is she's exploring a topic where there's a huge gap in the literature. So she, when, I mean, what do you, how could you, can you just like speak to that? Like when you encounter that with a student who needs to do a literature for you, but there's not really anything there? Um, yeah, well, so sometimes you have to, okay, so you've got the funnel, right? <laughs> sometimes yeah. the funnel has to get bigger. You know, the, the top part of the funnel has to get a little bit bigger. So um, that you, you need to, to uh, try to look for research that sometimes is not directly related to what you're talking about, right? So, um, but, but there's, I mean, there, there is no topic there is no research topic that has never been covered in some way. It's just that it might not be exactly the population you're, you, you're focused on. It might not be um, the, exact, the exact problem that you're focused on. Um, so, so you need to kind of figure out how to pull in other things, maybe from different disciplines um, with, with different populations. Um, and so, so that might be a situation where um, your your colleague might need to expand out a little bit, right? I mean, ultimately the goal is to kind of come into to finding that gap, but to get there, sometimes you have to really expand out. I'm I'm talking in like really vague terms, and so so I apologize for that. Um, no, but, it was a pretty vague question, you know. Right? Okay. Um, a big, it was a big question, so. But yeah. that makes sense, and I think it's good for us to hear it, because I know I know that. But sometimes I feel like maybe I'm pushing out too far, and it's going to be too big of a stretch. So I think it's just nice to hear that. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I think I, so. When when you're collecting literature, um, you should not be afraid of um, of venturing too far. You know, it, it, eventually you're going to have to come back um, to, to your, your primary problem. Um, but there's, there's no such thing as too much research. I, I hope that's helpful. I don't know. It is. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Building off of what you said there, there's no such thing as too much research. Um, because during this process, your problem of practice might have slightly changed here or there while we were wiggling through trying to get a good pop or an ex, you know, 
get the pop together, your topic kind of shifted from left to right. So now I'm finding that I have this enormous document with all of these articles that I need to synthesize into information that I want to put out. So where do I go from here? Do I go back and, and start this document all over again? Because it has multiple kind of, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Like um, I, you, when you're creating your pop, it just doesn't come. So you have to work on it. You have to tweak it and you have to change it. So more articles are pulled into your document, your massive document. And so now it's to the point where I don't, I can't organize it enough to say, these are the documents that I want to focus on. Yeah. Um, it, it, it sounds like you might need to um, uh, go back to an outline. So, so you need to figure out like, what is the through line? Um, and so it might, it, that might mean that you have to re outline your document. So what exactly do you mean by re re outline? Okay. So, so there, um, in, in, uh, uh, writing pedagogy, um, there's, there's this idea of, um, going back and re uh, it's sort of like doing a reverse outline. So you've written all this stuff, right? Okay, so you've got all that stuff. Um, can you outline what you've written already? Oh, I got you. And then can you start to like pull things that are not necessary out of it? Yeah, I, I think we kind of talked that about sense? that yesterday in, in one of the sessions or somewhere this week in one of the sessions, how now, I think Christine said it, now, she want, now we need to make a new outline to check off that we have, okay, have the, the, the items that we need to have, the content that we need to have. So kind of like a rubric at the end of an activity, now you're checking yeah. off, did I cover everything that I need to cover? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, yeah, I think that's that's a really good way of, of saying it, I think. Um, and, and also, <laughs> do you have everything that you need, but also are there things that you don't need that can be taken out of it? Okay. Because if you've got this giant document that just covers everything, um, that's not actually that useful. Right. You know, exactly. I mean, I mean, it's it's useful for you in the during the process, but but yeah, your she... your your final reader doesn't need to have all that stuff. Right. So um, so yeah, if you can if you can figure out what um, what might be able to uh, be pulled out, um, okay. I think I think that it's it sounds. From from what you're describing, um, it, it sounds like that's what that's probably what you need. Kevin, can I add something? Yes. So, one of the things that Christine and I have been talking, and 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 I'm glad that you mentioned the the outline. I think that that's probably something that we should have been emphasizing earlier uh, to help guide you guys. I know that um, you know when when you know Yolanda, you talk about all this stuff that you have now, and how do I put my arms around it, and and uh, you know I, I think. If you go back, if you haven't done a formal outline, you should do. And then the other thing is, you know, remember what we're talking about, at least in this chapter one, uh, is uh, identifying after you've done, you know, the whole methodology section, the intro section, is the what are the theme, the major themes uh, related to your problem of practice. And I think as long as you kind of just keep writing to those themes and how the the literature, the the the, the documents you reviewed. Uh, shed light on that, on, the, on those particular themes. And so um, I also went into, to, in terms of uh, gaps in the literature. So we know that, for example, and I, I'm not sure if she's on the call, but uh, Kathy, Kathleen Carr, uh, there's not, you know, one of the things that we've discovered that there isn't a lot of literature, but then, you know, then you can start looking at, uh, you know, the, some of the public scholarship that's out there. And uh, you also look at, uh, some of the, you know, what, what um, you know, uh, some, some, some um, interviews that, you know, you maybe you have to rely more on, on the empathy interviews for people that have uh, the anecdotal uh, uh, data or information that can move your, 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 the light that you're shedding on your, on those various themes. So I just wanted to add that um, to, to, and, and, you know, I, 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 I totally agree with, with Kevin's approach about be looking at that at that uh, outline, and I think Yolanda, the, the 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 concept of using it as almost a rubric is probably a, a a really strong way to go. So anyway, can I add something to that that I found helpful for everybody? Please. So 
I know not everyone's a fan, but I do annotated bibliographies for everything that I read. And what I also do is I put keywords. I, you know, I'll have keywords. So this way, when I go back, because you're right, Yolanda, like some stuff in the end, you go, oh, that's not helpful. So if you do the annotated bibliography or however you do it, if you have key, if you read it, I put key terms in there or themes that will help you later when you're sifting through figuring out what you do want to use and what you don't want to use. That, that's what I find. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a really good idea. Also, I don't, I don't know, John, if you, um, if you ever use a literature matrix. Um, so that, that's where you kind of, you, you organize, um, you, you take each source, you have your citation, um, and then like, you know, thematically just kind of describe whatever it is. Um, so then you have a, like a visual. Um, and that's something that, we, that uh, we've exposed to our students, different uh, okay. videos and whatnot. And in fact, I think last summer, uh, we had that uh, from our uh, hub kind of doing um, a review of, of, of the, uh, the, the, the matrix and you're absolutely right, that's an val invaluable tool. tool. Yeah, yeah, I think that can be really helpful just in terms of organizing your thoughts and and trying to figure out how different uh, sources might relate to each other. I think that's really important. Any other questions at this point? We'll, we'll, we'll have time for more. Okay. Um, all right. So, all right, I need to figure out how to share this. We can see it. Uh, yeah, but it's probably too small. Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try to roll with it. I want to give you a couple. So th this is uh, um, the research from, from what I research, um, which is uh, gender and music. Um, and so I, uh, so this might not be directly applicable to anybody um, necessarily, but um, I've, I have excerpts from three sources, and I'd like you to uh, take a few minutes to read them, and then I'm going to have you write a, a paragraph, um, trying to synthesize them. And don't, I mean, I, I, I didn't give you the citation, so don't worry about that. Um, but, um, and you can refer to Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, whatever, that can be the, the um, the citation. Um, but I want you to read these three sources and then try to figure out how they relate, what is the through line, um, and write a paragraph. Um, I guess, yeah, synthes synth synthesizing. I hate that word. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. I'm going to go on mute um, and, and let you take some time to do that. Kevin, the beginning of article one is not um, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It's got to be a way for me to share this with you. If you want, you can copy and paste each article individually into the chat. Each of those. Uh, or you can change your view. You can go to a, a presentation mode in view. Okay. <laughs> give, give, give me you just a minute. I'm gonna. I'm actually. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just put them into the chat. I think that's just gonna be the easiest thing for me at the moment. Okay, but it's not working. Hmm. It should. I I do it all the time. Okay. Um. All right, so I've got, I've got one. All right, give me just a minute here. I will get this. Yep. I'll get this together. It's there. Okay. This is really great. I think this will be really helpful. So, man, well, I hope like I this. hope I hope so. Because you got the know. page numbers in there, some quoting.
yeah, for some yeah. reason, I'm not able to copy the, the rest of them. So, so you've got article one um, in the chat, and then I'll just leave this here. So you've got article two and article three. Okay, so after you've read all of them and kind of thought about them, I'd like you to, um, we'll, we'll take maybe five minutes. Um, I'd like you to write a paragraph or maybe two paragraphs, um, depending on what you're thinking, um, uh, trying to put these uh, articles in conversation with each other. And obviously, I haven't given you the full articles. I've just pulled some stuff out, um, but, but take, Take a couple of minutes um, to, to just sort of write how you think they relate to each other.
Okay, so I'm going to give you maybe another minute or two. Okay, so so let's come back. I want to I want to hear what you what you thought. Um, so if you want to, you can read what you wrote, or you can just kind of summarize what you wrote. Would would anybody like to share? I'm almost done typing mine up, so I'll post that in the chat. Okay. All right. Should, so should should I give you another minute or two or Kevin there is like that would be great yes Thank there you, is Kevin. a comment in the chat okay I'll I'll tell you what before coronavirus I thought I was technologically savvy <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned not Kevin, can I read mine? Because I actually sent it. I sent it to Donna sure. instead of. Thing. Oh, just, that's why? I'm like, it's in the chat. <laughs> I'll just. Oh, no, can, please, please do. Please do. Can everyone see it? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've got yours. Re republish it and just put everybody. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm going to type it again. No, no, no. <laughs> no, just copy and hit everyone instead of me. Okay. Or just read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah just, yeah, just read it, that's fine. There is, a, there is a substantial need for academic support for black boys in schools. Research, show, um, research suggests this notion of con constantization to help students make connections to address difficult concepts of racism, schools are trying to find ways to promote a sense of identity. Identity issues are the cornerstone of development and success of black students. And then I had that the, the schools uh, incorporated, uh, are trying to support the sense of, of valued identity by incorporating cultural identified genre of hip hop. The article layers practices to help the learner to help the learner and I stop there. Okay, yeah, no, no, fair enough. I, I mean, I think that you, um, you're getting to the, the core of at least a couple of the articles. Um, you know, a, a part of this also was, um, I, th I think had to do with gender, um, you know, specifically. Um, but, but I think that you, you're, you're, you're pulling out the key. And again, I didn't give you the whole articles. 
so it's it's kind of unfair <laughs> um but yeah no i i think that i think you're pulling out the 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 key um the, the key points here for sure um this is a i i i, I use this particular collection of articles um in a music class um but yeah no i think i think that was good um i have one sentence i wrote so for the okay topic. okay uh, these articles examine uh the role the, the role of gender development and the intersection of culture class and race yeah 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 definitely um yeah i, I think that is the uh that's that's certainly the the sort of the the commonality um among them for sure yeah and anyone else want to share um i just mentioned a little bit some stuff i don't know i might be really off track but i just wanted to understand those topics um, in much more depth so i just wrote that the study of gender equality is important to understand the comparative races among men and women uh, there is a need of understanding that women who tend to do better than men are not actually competing, uh, but actually accelerating based on their interest and approach to these positions. Uh, gender equality can also be seen in terms of systemic racism, which accounts for hidden and conspiracy activities to demoralize a particular group. Uh, Brazil has seen this norm in their culture, and thus the scholars are mentioning the need of gender equality. I don't know if I'm off track. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think you are at all. Um, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, the uh, the the reference to to Brazil. Um, I mean, that that may be important, um, but uh, the the particular scholar that they're referencing has been incredibly influential, just sort of everywhere. Um, but but you're but you're you're positioning it. Um, in the in the local context uh, that he came from, which I think does make sense, um, I would I would expand it out probably. Um, but no, I mean again, I think that you're I think you're pulling out the the key ideas. Um, I think I think really well. Anyone else? I'll give it a go. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing here is that. Um, Trying to sum it all up. Well, music is an expression, one way to express your culture. And um, your culture is kind of part of your, your uh, understanding of your own world and your own society. And uh, that music being a part of it. And what I'm seeing, how it ties into the last one is it, uh, the last um, article is that um, men and women seem to. Uh, to to gravitate to music perhaps of different types or on different levels, but in order to make schools uh, inclusive for everyone, we need to kind of encourage um, everyone to appreciate all the different types of music in the culture, whether that's hip hop or classical, there should, it should mm -hmm. somehow be more welcoming. I don't know if that's. I, I think that makes sense. Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. I, I should say that the, these three articles um, uh, largely contradict each other. And again, the, this is this is sort of like my field, my my thing. Um, it's they're they're complicated, and they have they're they're coming at things from different directions. Um, but I think again, it, it does seem like you like you all all of you. Um, are pulling out the key ideas and putting them in conversation with each other, which is the goal. That's the goal here. So, um, yeah, I I think that makes sense, and I um, yeah, I I think that's good. Anyone else? I am. Uh, I'm gonna throw the. Uh, oh gosh, is it still here? Um, I, I'm going to throw up the uh, the PowerPoint. Kevin, I have a quick yeah, question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in terms of like you know annotating and um, identifying the the key ideas, the concepts in the piece, 
how do you know if you are uh, over articulating the details? Like how many should you really explore? Wow, that's yeah. Your paper. That is that's a that's I feel a really. Like sometimes I over explore too many lenses. So um, how do I determine which ones are significantly important to my like literature thing? I'm sorry, I'm so close. I was trying to read the literature um, review. Yeah. Um, no, I, that is a really good question. <laughs> um, uh, and, and it's a tricky one because it really, it, it depends on what you're, what you're studying, I think. Um, I, I, you, you have to keep a critical eye. Um, what, what is actually relevant to what you want to do? So as you're articulating your, your problem of practice, what aspect of a source like actually does apply to your problem of practice. And you might be able to take away the, the other stuff because no, no single source is going to have, is going to be specifically about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If, if it did, then why are you doing what you're doing? Right. Cause it's already there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, um, keep, keep asking yourself, is this relevant? I mean, it's it's probably all relevant, but is it relevant to what you are trying to do? It's, it's probably all important, but it might not all be important for your project. And one last thing. Yeah, go ahead. How often is too often to use the, the rhetorical? Um, well, give me an example. Uh, oh, I'll give you some, oh, like, uh, posing a question to the audience. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I would suggest avoiding it as much as possible. Okay. Um, typically, um, if you're going to ask a question, it should be a research question or something that you're actually going to answer. Um, I, I mean, the writing, even, even academic writing, um, writing is an art and not a science. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there, I, I can't give you hard and fast rules, but I can say that in general, it's better to avoid, um, rhetorical questions. If, if you can make a statement. Okay. That's good. Any, any other questions? Um, I, I want to make sure that everyone does have my email address. Um, just in case you need any, if you have any follow up questions or, you know, whatever. Um, I, wa I want to make sure that you all have that written down. Um, so you can get in contact with me if you need to. Um, I, my, this is essentially the last thing that I'm doing, um, at least for now. Um, but I, but I'm still, I'm always available. If you need to follow up. Thank you, um, uh, Kevin, for the time you put into this pre presentation and the one last week for, uh, you know, everyone knows in, that's in cohort one that we uh, brought Kevin on uh, for a month in uh, in June. Uh, it was we discovered some money that we could use, and we put it right in student support. And Kevin and another individual served as a, as a coach uh, to a number of the students of the program. Uh, Christine and I are, are are fighting the good fight with uh, those in power to free up money for us to be able to reengage Kevin and uh, and other uh, writing coaches. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, Kevin, thanks a lot uh, for the time for putting this presentation together. If you have a set, when you have a second, you can just also, in addition to sharing the the, the video with us, if you can send out uh, to to me and Christine the um, the PowerPoint, we'll make sure that we oh, put sure. it in in Blackboard so students can access it at some point if they want to go back and and take a look at some of the uh, you know good advice that you provided them. Yeah, yeah, and John, I'm I'm going to re-record the the one from earlier in the week because sure. that right. 
turned into a disaster. So I'm, yeah. I, I want I want you to have something decent. Well, I think, yeah, well, and, and I think that was more like a, well, you said it more bandwidth issue and technical issues on yeah. your, with your. Uh, but today it went it went pretty much flawlessly. So uh, the yeah. technology worked today. Yeah. So I'll I'll have all of that and then the other videos um, to you and Christine. Great. We appreciate it. Yep. All right, guys, we'll see you at the next sessions, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.